I had a question about the MLM. Even on the Discord, we talked a little bit about comparing it to Peloton. A Peloton's two thousand dollars, and it doesn't go anywhere. And like you said, you're burning oil to burn to burn fat. That's a great line. It's cool. really yeah, sticks. I, it, 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 it's always blown my mind that stationary exercise bikes require one ten power to operate. Are you kidding me? You're like you're 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 an inverter. You're, you're the outputting. Yeah. You're outputting power into this machine. And so, so that's, that's useful. Not only, not only are those machines just blowing off all of the useful energy that you are outputting, they're actually requiring the grid to supply power for that experience. And so, you know, that was one of the things early on in the development of the mean machine, as we sort of started to think about, okay, how does the drivetrain of this thing work? What are the thing? what are the really cool things we can do there? Um, and that, that, that one was just sort of like, well, that's obvious. If we don't have a, if we got a pedal generator, uh, you should be able to use it stationary and recharge the vehicle while it's uh, while it's sitting still. How much of a recharge do we get by pedaling for an hour? You can Google it. The average human outputs uh, pedaling. I I want to say something like you can a normal good exercise pedaling is like 150 watts, but I'd have to double check that. So you know you can if you're if you pedal for an hour, uh, you're gonna you can power a very bright incandescent light bulb for that whole hour as you're, as you're pedaling. Um, and so as, as our, there's a lot of work being done all over the place to make, a, make more efficient use of electricity. And so this is going to be one of those things where I don't think it's, it's that you're probably not going to power all your home appliances on it, but if you're on a, uh, a camping trip or something like that, and you want to run the blender at camp, That'd be cool. My question is two things. Number one, is there going to be a way for me to harness that power externally? The second thing is, and it leads to the API that you mentioned, you get into fitness here. Can the MLM generate subscription-based revenue like a Peloton? I think we will We will explore subscription programs for, for a number of things as we go on. And we've been talking about subscriptions, sort of like vehicle access subscriptions for shared fleets. Um, Interesting. Whether, uh, whether we can you know, sort of get somebody wants to pay 10 bucks a month for additional features and uh, exclusive content and fun community features. I think there, those, those are options down the road. Uh, there's, there is certainly nothing in this that would preclude that. And, um, uh, but we're, we're right now, I would say we're really focused on foundational tech and approaches. As, as I look at Arkhamon, I think as we go down the road, there are going to be lots and lots of ways to just sort of crank up additional revenue streams, right? Whether it's subscriptions for um, online features or fleet management components or shared fleet components or really good swag. Um, a lot, lot of ways, a lot of ways to, you know, sort of juice up uh, our margins beyond the basic stuff. But right now, the we've, we've got to stay very focused on the foundational components to building the full business. I think Arkimoto has taken a different approach than what I've seen other vehicle companies do. We build from the inside out, whereas uh, cars are typically built from the outside in. The designer makes these uh, the, the perfect lines on the sketchboard, and then you know gives it a name, and then market tests the name, and then mm -hmm. you know spends a lot of money on sketches about what this thing's going to be. And then they're like, oh, this is the really sexy sketch of what that car is going to be. And then they're like, what the heck are we going to put all the stuff inside that that does that thing? And then it becomes a really uh, complex engineering challenge to fit all the stuff into the idea. Whereas what we've done and what we did with, uh, with Platform 1, Platform 1X, and now with Platform 2 is really focus on the core experience, uh, the, the, the guts of the experience. Get that right and then build all the shells of the product and of the business around it. So, you know, one of, we just, we, we have not been a, a hype-based company. We've been very focused on product development. Now we're, we're adding additional focus on, let's make sure that we've got the market touch points to actually get people into the rides and that we can do that efficiently um, at, because we're aiming for a level of scale that's gonna require mm. um, a, a robust sales approach to go alongside.